Amanda, my dearest, darling Amanda. When I dance with you, I'm transported into another world. A magical, enchanting world where time stands still. Oh, let me hold you close, my darling. Let me breathe in your loveliness. <laughs> let me dance with you forever. Swing sensuously, my lips caressing your milk-white shoulders. Oh, Amanda, may this dance never end. It'll have to. Bus conductors coming round for us. Fans. <laughs> Just the three of us doing a show and getting it right on the night. I'm Robin and I'm handsome. And I'm Morris and I'm tall. I'm grey, I'm, I'm ugly, I'm short and I'm fat and I'm bald as a billiard ball. Where the grumble is. <laughs> Prisoner number one, what is your crime? A crime of passion. This is a crime of the heart. You will be shot through the heart. Prisoner number two, what is your crime? Treason. Treason is a crime of the mind. You will be shot through the head. Prisoner number three, what is your crime? Arson. There's the three of us, young as we are. We're really coming across. Three of us sing like a heart. We look like wet, wet, wet and rough. <laughs> Good <laughs> heavens. Crikey, you're really out of breath and no mistake. I know. It's my hobby, you see. Your hobby? What is your hobby? Racing pigeons. <laughs> Imagine how sexy he is, cos this is a radio show. Where's the grumbleweeds? Uh, good morning, helpline. Uh, Terence speaking. Hello. My name's Eric. I, I just want to tell you about some of the things I've bought recently. <laughs> Nothing works and I, I don't know what to do. I bought a new telly. That's packed up. <laughs> Got a new video, same with that. And the washing machine. Lasted three days, that did. The car's in dock. Even my new doorbell won't ring. <laughs> Every single thing I get breaks down. It wouldn't surprise me if the rotten telephone went and broke. Parting along, playing the full laughs to the end. Just the three of us, doing the voices, and in the wrong place now and then. Let's see. There's uh, three turns to the left, five turns to the right, four to the left, seven to the right. No, no, that's not it, no. Seven turns to the left. Yeah, five to the right. Eight to the left. No, 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 that's not it either. I'm never going to crack here at this rate. One to the right. Honestly, Harry, haven't you ever opened a tin of sardines before? <laughs> You know, Geoffrey, I've just had the most embarrassing experience of my life. You haven't, Ernest. I have, Geoffrey. They get right up my nose, these two do. <laughs> um, what happened about this embarrassing experience then, Ernest? Oh, it was awful! <laughs> I went into the shop and this young man took me inside leg measurement. The cheeky rascal. I wouldn't have minded, but I only went in for a quarter of boiled ham. <laughs> well, you, sh you should have said something. Oh, I did. What? Ow! Now, mm, he still had the cheese cutter in his hand. 
I can't believe I'm listening to this garbage. Hey, hey, hang on. Listen, can you, can you hear that? It's a barrel organ. Do you know, I haven't heard one of those in years. Oh, I love a barrel organ. You must be desperate. <laughs> hey, look, the barrel organ man's coming over to us. Hello, Mr. Barrel Organ Man. How do? May I say what a rare treat it is to meet people what enjoys the old barrel organ? Said Roy Hart playing a character part and waiting for thunderous applause. <laughs> He's got a monkey as well. Well, you have to have a monkey if you work the old barrel organ, you know. Hang on a minute. I recognise this Wally. Wally? Wally? I've seen him on the telly. I haven't had you, right? Hey, listen, pal. If you brought that flaming emu with you, I'll break your rotten arm. <laughs> you? Just say pack so that'll get rid of it. <laughs> no, no, young woman. I'm just an old organ grinder. Trying to earn an honest crust. Uh, how much does the midget want for the fur coat? <laughs> midget fur coat? That's my monkey. Water. <laughs> Water, what goes all over with me when I'm playing the popular melodies of yesterday. Old ones, new ones, neglected ones, filthy ones. Those days of long ago, way back in time, in past history. Ah, good old days. Good old days. Yeah, she was a lovely girl, old days. <laughs> what a goer. A man after my own heart. They wrote proper songs in the old days. Oh, hundreds. I do like to be beside the woman next door, was one. <laughs> Kiss me goodnight, Sergeant Major, and we'll both end up inside. That was another one. <laughs> if you were the only dog in the world and I was the only lamppost, you remember that. <laughs> What was your biggest hit? He's gonna get it in about two seconds if he doesn't follow. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh dear, dear me, sir. Did my naughty monkey shoot up the leg of your trousers, eh? <laughs> I felt that. You should. He hasn't eaten for two days, sir. <laughs> uh, whatever you do, don't stamp your foot. <laughs> should have a tetanus injection, really. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I will. Not you, the monkey, man. <laughs> I've got an idea, mateys. I'll sing you the love song, what I used to sing to my little Cockney sweetheart. My auntie lives in London. <laughs> Whereabouts? London N346. N346? Where's that? Aberdeen. Ah! <laughs> She's a case, that one, isn't she, sir? She really is. Get on with it. Right. I remember when I first sang this song to her all those years ago, the tears rolled up her cheeks. Rolled up her cheeks? Yeah. She was hanging from the light bulb at the time. <laughs> Each to his own, sir. A funny girl. <laughs> we met when she was with a circus. Bertram Mills. No, her name was Ada Burke. <laughs> she was a sharpshooter's assistant. She used to stand against a board. He fired a rifle and she caught the bullet between her teeth. When she came off, I says to her, that is the bravest thing what I have ever seen in all my puff. And I think you are beautiful. What did she say? She said, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what about the loose, sir? Right. One, two. That was really beautiful. <laughs> I've never heard a romantic song like that before. Now listen here, Hud, sing the rotten song or I'll swap your ears over and I'll tie a knot in your windpipe. Thank you, you silver-tongued rascal. <laughs> You've talked me into it. She broke his heart with a sausage. <laughs> Not a nice thing to do, I suppose. She broke his heart with a sausage when she shoved it right up his nose. <laughs> Then she picked up a carrot, 12 inches long and quite thick. 
when he saw her holding that carrot. It's no wonder he left her quick. I oh, yeah. Yes, once again, it's me, your old friend, Uncle Robbie, saying once again, welcome, once again, to nostalgia time, once again. You really do get right up my nose, pal. Thank you, Uncle Nasty. <laughs> this week, I'm going to look back at the hard times. You'll be looking for your ears in a minute, pal. <laughs> he doesn't mean it. <laughs> Now, I bet most people can remember the hard times, when times were hard. And believe me, back in the hard times, times were really hard. <laughs> Some people might find it hard to remember the hard times. <laughs> because things are not as hard today as they were back in the hard times. Back in the hard times, things were very hard. Back in the hard times, my knuckles are very hard, pal. Get on with it. I was just going to. Have you ever stopped to think what our parents did before the days of television? <laughs> That's what me and my 38 brothers and sisters often ask. <laughs> we didn't have luxuries like washing machines. And what puzzles some people is, before the days of washing machines, whatever did people stand the bread bin on? <laughs> we stood our bread bin on top of the birdcage so the crumbs weren't wasted. You must have been a revolting little specimen. Thank you, I was. <laughs> Let us examine another aspect of the hard times when times were very hard. Before the less hard times of today when times aren't as hard as they were in the hard times. <laughs> Will you just get on with it? Every morning, my mother would go downstairs and put small folded pieces of newspaper on top of some ashes and then cover them with little sticks. On top of these little sticks, she would put some little pieces of coal. <laughs> on top of these, some bigger pieces of coal. <laughs> then she would say to my father, There. All ready to warm you up. My father used to say, Thank you, Alice. But most wives make bacon and eggs for their husband's breakfast. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Next time I'll be talking about my granny's old knickknacks. <laughs> like her old toasting fork. Old, long and spindly, bent in the middle, a bit battered and tarnished from long hours propped against the fireplace. But despite that, she was still a good granny. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. holiday again this year, then I won't. Don't you mention flipping holidays to me. Well, I like a holiday, don't you, Geoffrey? Yes, it's the only chance I get to wear me hot pants. <laughs> Listen, you lad. Don't you remember what happened last year? Every spring bank holiday, we all get in the car and join the queue that's trying to go to the sea. Every spring bank holiday, we don't get very far. Oh, no, we know that the going is slow to the sea. We sit and swell to bumper to bumper on the motorway. The kiddies scream and bray, that's how we spend the day. We sit and speak of shrimping and sand and frolics in the foam. Then, at junction flipping ten, we all turn round again. And we queue to get back home. Oh, we do like to be by the M3 side. We do like to be by the M3. 
Oh, we do so enjoy a traffic jam, 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 where the radios play tiddly wham, bam, blam. Oh, give us a day by the M3 side. That's where the British love to be. It's the best day of the year. It could only happen here by the M3 side, by the M3. Do you know, it's the same every year, in it, Ernest? I know. Do you know that police patrolman? I'm sure he gave me the hard shoulder. <laughs> Do you know, I think I've left my bucket and spade in the RAC box. <laughs> Friday before the holiday, this year the governor said, I'll have to change your regular day at the sea. Come in and work the holiday. Take Tuesday off instead. On Wednesday too, just stay away at the sea. When Tuesday dawned, we started the journey full of tea and toast. By ten o'clock at most, we'd made it to the coast. We'd missed the Monday motorway queue, I really felt deprived. When I saw the sea, I thought, oh dearie me, we've actually arrived. <sighs> be beside the seaside oh we don't like to be beside the sea oh we do wait to paddle on the rocks 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 and go on with sand filling your socks 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 <laughs> so we didn't stay beside the seaside no wednesday we caught the 803 ah uh, we said hey boss hey you need us here They'll always be next flipping year. Beside the seaside, beside the sea. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present. Have you had a look under the sideboard? <laughs> well, I saw the cat playing with something a minute ago. <laughs> Have a look down the back of the chair. It's surprising where you can find on the back of a chair, isn't it, uh, next? It is, it is, it is. Mm, you mm. found me down the back of the chair last week. Yes. yes. Uh, what were you doing down the back of a chair in the first place? I was looking for our tortoise. Yes. <laughs> I think it had hyphenated. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose you know that you've ruined everything now. I was just about to present a brand new feature called Where Are They Now? Where are who now? That's what it's supposed to be about. Where is anybody now? I don't understand. Look, I was going to invite listeners to get in touch with us if they wanted to find a friend or a relative that they haven't seen for years. I've got a relative I haven't seen for years. Who? My Uncle Herbert. Well, when did you last see him? When I was a little boy, he left for Peru to join the Mounties. <laughs> Peru? Well, that's a long way away, old gaffer. I oh, know, you've got to get four buses. <laughs> uh, hang on a minute. He went to Peru to join the Mounties? Yes. Well, the Mounties are based in Canada. It's not his fault if he's cross-eyed. <laughs> and you haven't heard from him since? He sent me a letter by post. From Peru? China. <laughs> China? What would he do in China? He wanted to start a kangaroo farm. <laughs> well, I'm going to do this if it kills me, and it probably will. Ladies and gentlemen, we present... Bugles. <laughs> It's my special feature, right? Where are they flaming now? Well, come to think of it, I haven't seen my cousin Cecil for a long time. Do you know, I haven't seen my pet goldfish since somebody put a snorkel on the cat. <laughs> if it's the last thing I do, I'll present my special feature. Ladies and gentlemen, where are they now? Oh, look at that! Oh, <laughs> funny, isn't they? <laughs> <clears throat> what is funny? There's something moving around inside your trousers. Yes. <laughs> something moving around inside. Oh! 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 Hello, Roy. What's wrong with him then? There's something moving around inside his trousers. Oh, that's a relief. He's found my monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Don't panic. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. Walter. Walter. Come on, sunshine. 
There we are, look at that. Safe and sound sitting on my shoulder. It's not very nice having a live monkey inside your flipping trousers. You've got nothing to worry about, Sylvia. <laughs> All right, clever clubs. Listen, despite what's happened, I'm still going to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, where are they now? Well, that's a good question if you've had a monkey inside your trousers. <laughs> Well, I think it's a marvellous idea, fellas, trying to find lost relatives and friends. You might be able to help me find some old variety performers I'm looking for to write about in my book all about the old-time musical. Hey, we'll help you with that one, Roy. We'll help you there. Any particular <laughs> old variety performer? Archie Grunt. Archie Grunt? And what did he do? Well, he walked around with a pig on his head. What for? It was raining. Oh. <laughs> What about this book you're writing about the old-time musical, then? Well, I can't finish the book until I find the acts. Where are they now? Exactly. Great acts they had in them days, you know. Like who? Oh, marvellous acts. The two twerts. <laughs> the two twerts? The two twerts. And what did the two twerts do? Well, I'll tell you. One twerk balanced a 20-foot pole on top of his head, and the other twerk climbed up to the very top of the pole and balanced on one leg. You'd have to be right twerk to do a thing like that. <laughs> oh, don't. It was very sad. Oh, what happened? Well, the twerk balancing on the top of the pole on one leg... Yes. ...he slipped. And someone from the back of the circle shouted, how's that for a toffee apple? <laughs> how's that for a toffee apple? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it must have been a good night out in those days. Oh, I'll say it was. Outside the theatres, eh? The toff in all his finery saying to the cabbie, have you seen what your horse has done in my top hat? <laughs> the young girls in their beautiful gowns. You know, some of them deliberately put their bustles on back to front just to frighten the life out of their mothers. <laughs> They were all there. The old man with the hot chestnuts. He must have been in agony, him. <laughs> Great acts in them days. Elsie and her disappearing duck. What a bill. <laughs> Ladies and flaming gentlemen, where are they flaming well now? They had proper turns in them days, didn't they? They did, young man, proper turns. The brothers Albert and the delectable Tilly. Adagio dancers? Oh, what did they do? Well, one brother, Albert, he'd lift up the delectable Tilly over his head, spin her round and round, throw her the full length of the stage, and the other brother, Albert, would catch her with one hand. Oh, I'd like to see that turn. I'm afraid you'll never see that turn again. Wipes away tear. <laughs> Something uh, untoward happened? Picture the scene. The first brother, Albert, picked Tilly up over his head, as he always did. He began to spin her round and round, then he hurled her across the stage. Go on. It wasn't until she was in mid-air and halfway across that stage that Tilly remembered the other brother, Albert, had left earlier that day to go and visit his granny and bride. <laughs> what happened to Tilly? They found her two days later in Huddersfield, <laughs> lying flat out in the frozen food counter at Tesco's. Oh, that's terrible. That's awful. Well, yeah. I thought so at the time. 75p a quarter, they were asking for her. <laughs> where are they now? Ah, where is he now? Oh. One of the greatest comics of all time, that's all. Harry Tat. Harry Tat. <laughs> he was billed as Harry Tat and his big flat hat. He did his act in a big flat hat. He did everything in his big flat hat. <laughs> he was the very first comic to tell the joke. Which joke? About the man with a dirty piece of blotting paper in his ear. What did he have a dirty piece of blotting paper in his ear for? He was listening to the ink spots. <laughs> Go on then, finish the joke. <laughs> finish it? He ended up blotto. <laughs> but there's one old time act I want to get my hands on for the terrible thing he did. Terrible thing? Magician. The bewildering Bert and Yvette. Yvette helped the uh, bewildering Bert. Yeah. As well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> my brother fell in love with her. The bewildering Bert was mad with jealousy. What did the bewildering Bert do? He said to my brother, did the bewildering Bert. <laughs> he said that if my brother didn't leave Yvette alone, he'd perform a terrible magic curse on him, what only magicians know about. Didn't make any difference. Your brother went on seeing her then. And the bewildering Bert kept his word. Well, what did he do to your brother? You see this monkey? <laughs> your brother. My brother, that little monkey is. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the likeness. <laughs> that is a cruel thing to say, Uncle Nasty. 
No, you're right. <laughs> Come on, Walter. I'd best get you back to your cage, mate. Uh, what about your book on old music all that? Well, I've only got one chapter left to write. And it's about the worst act I ever saw. Oh, were they bad? Dyer. Dyer? <laughs> <laughs> when they were on the bill, two pound tickets were changing hands outside the theatre for 25p. Mm. <laughs> two pound tickets for 25p? That's <laughs> <laughs> dreadful. <laughs> uh, it would be an old time act. Clapped out years ago. Oh, I, uh, <laughs> who were they? Well, they used to call themselves the Grumbleweed. See you, lads. <laughs> Come on, man. You've been listening to Someone and the Grumbleweeds. Graham Morris and Robin were the Grumbleweeds, and me, Roy Hard, star of Stage Screen and Law Court, was Someone. The music was provided by Dave Collett, Perry Duke, and Andy Marbles, and the lyrics were by Jeremy Brown. The script was by Eddie Brabham, Ron McDonald, John Brown, Richard Jones, and the producer who's done for comedy what the news headlines has done for every politician since Harry Wood the Wake, Mike Craig. <laughs>